right. Uh, so we have Megan Montefusco here. Uh, Meg, maybe just speak a little bit about the defensive performance today, uh, not only back-to-back -back wins, but a clean sheet tonight. Yeah, it felt amazing to finally get a clean sheet. Um, we've been working towards that for a long time, um, so it felt right to finally get that tonight. Um, we're building our relationships, too. You know, I feel really good next to Em. Um, obviously, me and Haley go way back, so I think we're just solid. And then Anna came up huge, um, as she does. So it was just a great team performance, and our back line is just really coming together. It's exciting. What else? I got just want to ask you about that cohesion with the back line, but also with the midfield, their kind of support in, in protecting you guys and, and the kind of relationships that you've been able to build with, with Michaela and, and Viv and just that cohesion in general to be able to keep that clean sheet. Yeah, they played really well tonight. As Kayla especially, I thought, won a ton of balls in the midfield. Viv was picking up second balls. Um, they're just building and growing into this league, and, um, you know, they've worked at it really hard. I've seen them, and, you know, we talk all the time at training to figure out little details to get us to where we are tonight. Um, and it's really coming together. Um, and, yeah, I'm just really proud of our performance tonight and proud of them especially. Please. At the start of the season, um, you were on the bench, and then you worked your way in the last two games. Can you talk a little bit about the mindset that you had through that process? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, it was tough. Um, you come into every season wanting to play. Every player on this team wants to play, wants to be on the field. But, um, you know, I had to take a, a step back and just kind of, you know, work my way back into the lineup. Had to get to game fitness and, and get back in there. Um, and it took time, took preseason, um, and just, you know, reestablishing re relationships with players on the team. And um, I thought I did a good job in that, in that role. Um, I was trying to be as supportive as possible, um, elevate the group, and just help people learn and grow um, with my experience and just share that with them. It definitely was tough, but, um, you know, we're a team, and the team comes first, and, um, yeah, anyone can play in this team. I guess talking about the team, just the, the progression from, from day one at the beginning of the season to now, it's been noticeable. Um, just kind of talk a little bit up from, from your perspective how, how much this team has grown in such a short amount of time. Yeah, I mean, I think we've said it since day one, um, we're a young team and we're developing and trying to grow um, as a young group. And we knew it was gonna take a bit to, to build relationships and to get confidence, especially. I think that was a big thing for this team was just playing, playing with fear at first. Um, and so once we finally figured out our identity and um, got that confidence, um, all it took was just a little bit of, you know, just cohesion with the group. And I think just playing hard at training and and just that belief in ourselves, and we finally got that win, and, and that took it to the next level. Um, so now it's just, there's no looking back. We know who we are. We know what we can do. The desire, the motivation's there. Um, we like being the underdogs. I think that's something that um, we don't talk about, but it's fun. Um, people don't think that we can beat them, and we come out, and we just show them what we can do. And um, I love being in the back line and just watching players like Marta and Adriana just go off on teams, and they just don't see it coming. Uh, it's so fun. and. Um, I'm just excited for the rest of the season. Sean? There's been a lot of changes in the lineup from game to game, other than this one and, and the most previous game, and players playing multiple positions. Um, How has it been for, for you and for the team dealing with so many changes in the lineup from game to game? Yeah, I think that kind of goes hand in hand with the season now, you know, with the Challenge Cup and just all the games that we have um, back to back. I think, you know, there's gonna be rotation. You've seen that throughout the whole league um, and that's fine. You know, you can put anyone on this team on the field and um, they're gonna show up and give it their all. Um, but again, that, that also means, you know, we, we've gotta find relationships and build the team and build the group. And these last two games, I think we were able to do that and that's why we got the win. So um, it's a bit of balance. So I think, as much as we can stick with the same lineup, I think is, is gonna be good for us. But of course, there's gotta be rotation here and there. Last one with Luis. Can you talk a little bit about how the growth and development occurred when you guys let in those late goals to now seeing those games out? Yeah, um, those were really tough. Um, you know, we sat in the locker room after a game really late one night. You know, the coaches didn't even come and talk to us after. It was just our team. We had to look each other in the eye and and really get down to it. Um, we were like, what is holding us back here? What is going on? We gotta figure this out. And we just said it how it is. And now it's like ingrained in us that that is not something that we want. That's not a part of our team identity. Um, we have to close out games. We have to manage them better. And the focus is 
for 90 plus minutes. I mean, if it takes 100 and whatever minutes we have to play all the way through. And um, I think because we've talked about it so much, because it happened, you live and you learn, and um, that experience is now showing, and we're not going to do that again. Cool. We are now joined by uh, Kylie Strom, fresh off her kit swap. Uh, Kylie, just to get things started, uh, you've played every minute with the team this year, so you've seen it all. Just how is the team feeling after back-to-back -back wins? It's massive. It feels so good to get that momentum. In the beginning, it was a bit tough, beginning of the season, um, but we never gave up. We always knew that it was coming. We were so close, we could taste it, and we just had to fix minor little things, and now we're fixing those minor little things, and, and we're fine, and it feels great. Awesome. I was just talking to, to Megan about uh, the underdog mentality that you guys have had, and she said you know, she loves being the underdog and kind of playing with, with the – uh, the, the knowledge that people aren't believing in, in the team. What's your kind of perspective on that? I think, yeah, we, we know what everybody says about the Orlando Pride. Um, and honestly, I think it's good. We play with a chip on our shoulder, and we have to start changing the narrative. Um, every game, we have to earn respect. It's not going to be handed to us. We have to earn the right to play. Seb talks about it all the time. And I think game by game, we're doing the right things and continuing to earn respect. And I, I think it's really exciting. And we're going to be a team that people are going to – going to have to look out for. Please. You had an assist tonight. Can you talk a little bit about that hustle for the ball and what you were thinking when you put it in the mixer? We've been focusing a lot on, on set plays. Um, Paul, our goalkeeper coach, talks a lot about how the game is won between the two boxes. And um, so it's been a huge focus for us. And you can see from the last two games, we've gotten results off of um, set pieces. Uh, so yeah, you just got to put it in the mixer and Messi had a great header to get on the end of it and it was just a, a desire and willingness to get in the box and score a goal. In terms of the, the first half to the second half progression, um, you guys had a, a very good confident first half and then in, early in the second half they were kind of on the attacking front kind of pushing you guys back. What was the kind of uh, adjustment from, from first to second half and how did you kind of as the second half go on kind of adjust to it? No two halves are the same. We always know about, like, we always know that. We talk about it at halftime. Um, so you got to be ready for anything. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's football. There's ebbs and flows and, and different momentum in the game. And we didn't break. We weathered the storm. And um, sometimes that's, that's what it takes. It's not always pretty. But um, I think there were moments in the second half where we got it back, possessed the ball, um, had good game management, and, um, yeah, got the three points. Go back to Luis. Can you talk a little bit about the evolution of Kylie Strom as a pride player from your struggles to the improvements to where you are now? It's been, it's been quite the journey for sure um, here at the Pride. Uh, been here for two and a half seasons now, and we've had a lot of changes, players, management, coaches, personnel. Um, and yeah, we, we stuck through it all, and it's good to see that we're, it's all finally paying off um, for us, for the fans. Um, I think it's been a long time coming for the Pride, uh, so it's, it's really exciting. I, I think we're finally turning the page, and, and we have something really special here. Last one. Just in terms of the uh, kind of building of relationships within that back line, you've, you've played now with uh, Emily the last couple of games on that. Uh, left side of the field. How have you seen her improvement from the, the early days of the season to now, uh, just in terms of her confidence, her play on the ball, and uh, you know, just kind of overall general defense? She's, she's fun to play with. Um, she's rock solid back there on and off the ball. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy that she's a rookie. Um, she definitely doesn't play like that with the, the confidence and tenacity that she has. Um, so it's, it's awesome to play alongside her, and yeah, she's, she's killing it. Thank you, Kyla. All right, we will wrap up with head coach Seb Hines. Uh, Seb, as always, how are you feeling after this one? Back-to-back -back wins. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice feeling. Um, I thought in this game it was a moment, an opportunity to really um, show how far we've come from the start of the season. You know, it's nice to get a clean sheet, but I think it could have been a you know a three or four nil game, and that's where we need to be better. I think. We need to be more ruthless in front of goal. Um, and that's something that we'll talk about um, after the game with the players. But I'm really happy for them. I'm really pleased for them. Um, it, was a, it was a nail biter at the end. And you start thinking about the previous games and how they've ended. But you know we saw it out. And it will take a lot of confidence on uh, how we finish the game.
Austin, start us off. I guess kind of going off of that uh, past few games here at home, are you proud of the, the progression of this team, just in the mentality of being able to see the game out and, you know, have that uh, grind to be able to, to get the one nothing win? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we've, we've obviously reviewed every game um, home and away and, we, we said at the start of the year that it's going to be a, a learning season for us, you know, with so many young players, a new team, new staff. Um, and you're seeing now the development from the players, the progression that we've made, and I'm so happy for them to start getting the results that they've, they've deserved. So, um, again, it's, it's two games. We've got to make up for the games early on in the year, but we're, we're starting to create a good momentum um, each game now. Release. Coach, can you talk a little bit about your midfield? Uh, you're keeping that consistency from one game to the next, and it seems like the players that you select are the the ones to get you the results. I mean, you you have to reward the players for the the effort and their um, performances. So, you know, for me, you go away to San Diego, you get three points. A uh, three-one win, you know, you have to look at the next game, and and like I said, you get what you deserve, um, and that becomes playing time. Um, again, I'm I'm pleased with the players' performances um, in this game as well. So, yeah, it's it's a competitive environment. Everyone's um, challenging for a starting spot. So when you have that shirt, you've got to hold on to it, and that's what the players are doing right now. Awesome. I just wanted to ask you about Messiah. Did, did, other than the, the goal that she was able to score, just her overall game and her progression over the course of the season, her hold-up play, uh, beating players off the dribble, uh, just kind of the intangibles that she's able to provide for you as, as the lone forward up top. Just how, how have you seen that progression as a professional um, just the last couple of games in? I think everyone can see it. From the, the player from the start of the season or preseason, if you want to go that far back, but... She, she's like a sponge right now. She's taking every bit of information. She's getting better. You know, we, we spoke heavily about hold-up play, and she's starting to implement that in some of the top centre-backs in the league. So I'm really happy for her. I'm happy that she got a, another goal as well. I think it always helps as a, as a four. But, you know, I want her to be more ruthless as well. I want her to start really believing her, in her ability and be a little bit selfish as well at times. Like... You know, you take a shot, it's okay. Like, you're a forward. It's, it's fine to shoot. So, yeah, I think she's she's making real good progression uh, along with a, a lot of the other players as well. Um, so, yeah, they just got to keep it going. Sean, and then we'll wrap up, you, Kyle. You've spoken multiple times this year about wanting to get uh, a win at home for the fans. And uh, I'm just curious about now that you've gotten your win, you've gotten your first win here at home, um, how you feel about that, and what does that do for the team moving forward? Yeah, it's not only the team, it's the fans as well. We want to leave them happy, smiling. It, it, it helps their weekends as well. So, you know, you, you, you build a team with the energy of the fans, and I think the more we can win, the more we can put performance together, the more fans are going to come out and watch us play, and, you know, it's a real hostile environment for the opponent to come here. So... Yeah, we just got to keep doing our job. Um, and, you know, the more fans uh, that come here to Explorer, you know, the more of an advantage that we can have here. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pleasing to see the, the fans out here today supporting the team, pushing the team all the way to the final whistle. And, you know, you can really use that energy um, in your performances. So, yeah, um, it's a, it's a two-way street, both for our fans and the players. And, you know, again, it helps getting the three points. Kyle, last one. You talked about the mentality in the team, and especially late in games. How important have the veteran players been in helping the, the young kind of upcoming core of the squad with that? Yeah, it's, it, you know, the experience of being in them situations obviously helps um, along with the staff. Um, you know, we've been in situations where you're hanging on to a 1-0 a lead and trying to manage the game. And, you know, we've spoke heavily about previous games, about, you know, managing games, how to, you know, take it into the corner, run the clock, um, you know, being a little bit more direct. And, you know, you see the rewards by getting three points at the end. Um 
I think the veterans have been outstanding. You know, it's nice now to keep Marta on the field for the full 90s. You know, previous games we've had to manage her, obviously, with her injuries, but she's fully fit now. And just to have that leadership and that experience to, to see out the game, hold up the play, you know, win fouls has ultimately helped us um, win, the, win the game at the end. But... You know, the bat line was brilliant. Anna Morehouse was was great as well. Um, and there's a real good balance between, you know, the veterans. And they're not even that old. Um, but they look old because of the young players that are around. But, you know, they still got years ahead of them. Um, so everyone's learning right now. And it, it's a brilliant environment to be a part of. Cool. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, guys.